So we just received in the mail this Psi Bio Ketone Sensor. I think that's how you say it, Si Bio Ketone Sensor. Um, it's a continuous ketone monitoring system. So it's this, it's a little patch that goes onto the back of your arm here. And I guess somehow it continuously monitors your blood and the ketone levels in it. Um, so it says real-time Bluetooth transmission. So it hooks up with an app that you can use to see what's going on. And it stays on for about 14 days of continuous monitoring. Now it also says on the package that it is not for medical use. So perhaps that's important to also disclose, but I think it's gonna be really helpful in terms of giving us additional insight into our continuous ketone levels throughout the day. So I'm excited to see how this goes. Okay, so you get this in the pack, get this in the pack and instructions, which I will read. So the instructions are very straightforward. It's great to show them pictures. They are very straightforward. I was expecting this kind of like thick, wordy thing, but there's kind of nice photos to show you how exactly to do it. And it seems pretty straightforward. So step one was scan the app. Step two was set up the app. So open the app and tap on register on the login screen, follow the app instructions to create an account. And this is what it looks like once you've created an account. Next step is to get ready. <laughs> step one, select a site on the back of your upper arm. So I'm gonna do right here. Step two, use an alcohol wipe to remove any oily residue and allow your skin to dry before applying the sensor. Step three, peel off the lid of the sensor pack. Caution, the pack should be on a flat desktop. <laughs> Really on there. Okay, there we go. Step four, uncover the cap from the sensor applicator. So I think you take this off and you press this firmly down until it comes to a stop. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> Look at that needle. Can't see. Tilt the timer more to you a little bit more. Oh yeah, okay. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> a little is an understatement. Quite nervous. I don't love needles, especially giving them to myself. So, oh my God. Okay. Step six, press and pull the safety clip out. Okay. Step seven, place the sensor application applicator over the site and push the button down. Now your sensor is well applied. Okay, so I'm nervous. Um, looking at the videos of people doing this on YouTube or on their own site, people are nervous and they're always like freaking out and then they do it and it's like, oh, that's no big deal. So I have a feeling that's what you're about to see right now, but this is intimidating. I, I have fear right now about doing this. Okay. It gets dry. I wish I had a mirror so I could see. Is that good? Or maybe farther back here? Yeah, sure. Oh my God. I'm so scared right now. It's such a big needle. But okay, there's like women putting this on and like making a salad and it's just no big deal. They're carrying on a conversation so it can't be that bad, but I'm, I'm, I'm really nervous. It's a really menacing needle. Okay. <laughs> I can do it. I'm so scared. I don't know if I can do it yeah. to myself. <laughs> okay. Count it down. Okay. On one. Or 30, on... 29, no, no, no. 28. <laughs> no, let's count it down. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Okay. So I'll say go. Oh my God. No, just wait. Just wait. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. It's no big deal. Okay. Can we count it down? Right here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do one, two, three, and go. Okay. okay. One, two, three. I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <sighs> okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> Just push it down. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh my God. It was fine. It was totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, like I predicted, I did it and it was fine, but that was really anxiety inducing with a big needle. Okay, so there you go. It's on. My heart is just racing right okay. now. Looks good. Hopefully that's on right. And then th we also got um, these covers for it because it's supposed to be water resistant or waterproof, but I don't know, like two weeks on like that seems like a lot to ask, especially if I'm sweating kind of every day doing exercise and maybe even swimming and stuff. So we got these little additional waterproof protectors. So this is a little bit more discreet. It becomes a little less discreet when you put this thing on, I think, but that's okay. This. Wow, that goes on well. I have hairy arms and I'm not really looking forward to taking this off. <laughs> there. Nice. Voila. Okay, so I'm really looking forward. Well, I guess now I have to pair it. So step four, use the app. Sensor warm up, please wait 60 minutes. Okay, cool. So in an hour, I'm going to start getting readings from this monitor. So I will share more of what that's like with you then. I'm a little nervous now. Yeah, okay. See, it gets so you. So you pull this thing out. You pull the safety clip out. Okay. And I'm just gonna push down on this. Yeah. Oh man. Should I wait? I should I wait a little? Until you're braver? Yeah. <laughs> Should I wait until I never do this? <laughs> okay. I think the alcohol is good, hey? Wait, you need a bit of alcohol before you do this? Yeah. <laughs> we can't do that anymore. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, I'm going to do this on three, two, one, go. Okay? I felt the countdown was harder, but you do. Okay, I'm not going to do a countdown. I'm just, just going to do, do it. Just do it. You know, it does sting a little. Well, okay. But, like, not as much as you think. Yeah. Okay. You're a little crooked, but that's okay. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, did I do oh it wrong? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. I kept clipping it in the shower, forgetting it was there. <laughs> So it is on my arm. It's been on my arm for, I don't know when we put it on, but roughly the afternoon and the evening now. It's now 7.45 at night. Oh, wow. I'm going up. Uh-oh. I don't know if that's good or bad. I just had a fat bomb. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, it's measuring, it, the measurement that this is giving the continuous ketone monitor is millimoles per liter. So I think that's ketones, right? Ketones in your system. So it's giving you kind of a range from zero to eight. I'm currently at 4.3, so it's saying fat, fast burning, and it's actually saying you are burning fat at around 27 and a half grams per hour, which kind of blew my mind when I heard that because I, if that's true, I'm not eating enough fat to maintain that level of fat burning throughout the day, throughout 24 hours. So I don't know, that that's kind of going to be interesting data to take back to Nicole and ask her what she thinks about all that, if she thinks that that amount of fat burning is accurate or not. And I haven't been in 4.3 the whole time. It said my highest has been 4.3 and my lowest was 2.6. This is what the app looks like if you want to see it. So I'm 4.3 right now. This is a graph of where I've been over the last however many hours. 4.3 is my highest, 2.6 is my lowest. Yeah. So that's my report. So I just got done a about 25 minute run or so and looking at my continuous ketone, this is the app for this continuous ketone monitor. Reminder, I'm wearing this, but this is the app and it says that I'm currently at 1.8, which is quite low relatively to what I have been. We'll look at, I guess, that's kind of where I'm at, but you see this mark drop at the end here. That's kind of overnight, but also I definitely dropped during my run. So I'm just going to show you now what Nicole had to say about why that can happen after exercise. Sometimes, this is very well known, sometimes when you exercise a little harder, do a little bit more sprinting, for example, or intensity, 
it will deplete your glycogen stores in your muscles, in your legs. And those, uh, those glycogen stores have to be upkept. That's kind of your body's way of making sure that you have super fast rocket fuel in case a lion jumps out and tries to eat you. You have to be able to run fast. So your body is always going to prioritize filling those glycogen stores in your legs. And so what happens is when you, even when you're keto, um, you, what's going to happen is if you exercise past a certain level, you're going to deplete those stores and then your liver is going to shoot out some glucose to replace it. And what we see happen with our athletes is that, you know, they'll come back from a run or from a CrossFit workout or something and they feel amazing. They feel really good, but they'll check their ketone levels and the ketone levels will have dropped and they'll wonder why that is. Well, it's because of that. And within just an hour or so, they'll go back up without any problem. Okay. So we don't really worry about that. That's a normal variation um, and, and you should be fine with it. So it's been about an hour since my run now and I'm back up to 3.5 and you can see the graph dipped for my run and then came back up. So that's kind of interesting with exercise. What you making, Rob? Cauliflower mac and cheese. Mm. Which I think is pretty simple. It's like a head of cauliflower and then you roast it after you break it into, cut it into small pieces. And then the sauce is... Um, what is it? Shark or old cheddar cheese, cheese, cream, and butter. Yeah. <laughs> I got the Keto Mojo in the mail finally. Um, it is a blood glucose and ketone monitor. So it is another one that involves a needle. I'm a little bit apprehensive about how much needles are involved in this keto process, but hopefully it won't be too bad as well. I'm going to start off by sticking one of the test strips for ketones into the machine turns on automatically. Okay, now moment of truth. I think I did this right. See, pull. I think I already did that. So I stick it onto my finger. There's been a lot of like blood oath jokes going on between me and Rob. <laughs> it feels a little sacrificial to like draw blood from myself for this machine, but okay, let's do this. Oh, I'm nervous again. <laughs> Okay, just a little prick, right? <laughs> it just hurt. It didn't puncture my skin. Shoot, I might have to up it. Okay, I wonder if I can do this again without replacing the lancet. Because it didn't actually prick my skin. I'm going to bump it up to a three. It goes from one to five for how deep it goes. I'm not thrilled that I'm going deeper now, but... Oh, here's blood. Just wait. Just wait. It's not enough blood. Okay, I'm going to do another finger right here. I'm going to try. That wasn't fun. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay, try this again. Maybe I pulled it away too quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not pleasant. <laughs> okay, we'll try this again. Ow. There we go. Okay, we'll wipe away the first bit of blood. Get some more. Squeeze the blood out of me to complete the blood oath. Squeeze more blood out and hopefully... Oh. Okay, it's counting down from nine. That's a good sign. Three point three. So that's interesting because that is very, very, very close to the continuous ketone monitor that I'm wearing right now. I'll just grab my phone and see where that's at right now. So the last time it logged was twenty one. Okay, just now. So and I said three point two. So that is very, very similar, and that's kind of cool to know that because I think this one is accepted as the most accurate way to test your ketones. So it's kind of cool to cross check it with this continuous ketone monitor, which again is on the back of my arm and giving me constant feedback about my ketone levels. It's kind of cool to know that they're pretty similar. Okay, so I'm 3.3.
And it was rough, but it wasn't that bad again. I, I think it was worse than the con- ketone monitor, the continuous ketone monitor. That was really not a, not bad, but this was kind of scary and a little painful. <laughs> I'm a big baby. <laughs> so this was less bad than the continuous ketone monitor? No, I think this was worse. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Especially since you have to do it repeatedly throughout the day. Right. I'm not, not super into that. <laughs> but... Cool that the results are similar. For yeah. The continuous ketone yeah. Monitor. It's kind of nice to be able to like cross check all of these different ways of measuring. And it's going to be good data to get to ensure we're doing this properly. Okay. Moment of truth. Yeah. What I was just saying is let's see how big of a baby Lauren is. Okay. Who's the one who's been <laughs> complaining nonstop about the continuous ketone monitor? You know what? And how ouchy it is. <laughs> I do say that it's ouchy. Yeah. It's, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it still is a little stingy. Mm. Okay. I think we know how this is going to fare, yeah, folks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and just go for it. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> I bet you didn't think there was this many needles involved when you signed up for this. Oh! <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay, wipe away the first bit of blood. Yeah, you wipe away the first here. Okay. We missed an opportunity, hey, okay, to become blood. To seal a blood pact? Yeah. There's time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. You got enough blood. Maybe that was too thick for you. <laughs> I made she him, pushed me I to made say, him do oh, the you thicker do one. Four, <laughs> you don't want to have to do this twice. It's not that bad. 1.8. Okay. So my continuous ketone monitor is, I think, saying about the same thing as well. It says 1.6. So close. Close. Was yours a little bit higher? My keto mojo reading was 0.1 higher. Okay. So I guess that you got to take an average or something. Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out by more testing. You're going to have a lot more of this in your future. Oh, great. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So I just blew um, on the breathalyzer, the Biosense breathalyzer, and it says that I'm still in high. So it'll be interesting to kind of, you know, compare and contrast results with the Keto Mojo as well, which is the you know, the fingerprint blood analysis of ketone levels. We'll see what's the most accurate. I think the Keto Mojo is actually supposed to be the most accurate, but we'll see how closely this and the continuous ketone monitor compare to the Keto Mojo. So I just got home and threw together a quick meal with stuff that we had in our fridge. Well, mostly had in our fridge. I did make the coconut, or sorry, not coconut, the uh, cauliflower rice. So I made cauliflower rice and then I threw in some meats we had in the fridge. We had some flank steak and some leftover pork tenderloin and then I just poured uh, coconut milk over top of all of it enough to get enough fat into the meal and then I chopped up an avocado and voila a keto friendly meal this is what we're eating for dinner tonight this has become kind of a staple in terms of having a lettuce wrap with some kind of meat and cheese and avocado so what this is is a lettuce wrap Um, There's some Gouda cheese in there. There's some avocado in there. And then there's this smoked meat with mustard on top. The meal I just showed you was a little bit short on fat for a full proper keto meal. So we're just adding some of this kind of dessert. It's basically just coconut milk with, what are they called? Basil seeds? Yeah. Basil seeds. And then a little bit of stevia, I believe. Stevia sweetener, which is okay to have. Um, And Oh, and cinnamon, yes. And it's really, really delicious. I'm just going to chop up a bunch of broccoli. We're going to make a chicken broccoli kind of casserole bake with lots of um, lots of cheese. I was once in Hawaii. I think I've told you this story. And we're at a Costco. And a Costco food court. And there were signs for stuff. And one of them was chicken B-A-K-E. And I was like, oh, what's chicken bake? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. 
Rob's really cultured. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in Hawaii, you know? It's like, ooh. It's bake. Is it something different? They have baked chicken bake here. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to try that? <laughs> <laughs> so basically what's in here so far is we put the broccoli in, we put the chopped up rotisserie chicken in, we put the cheese in, the cheddar cheese, and then we put the heavy cream. And that's what this mixture is. And then we're going to put this all mixed up into the pan, which I have pre-sprayed with avocado oil. And then we are going to top it, I believe, with Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. And you're supposed to top it with sliced almonds, but we forgot to get those at the store. So we are going to chop up some macadamia nuts and put that on top. That might be nice. And this is what it looks like fresh out of the oven. Can't wait to dig in. Hi. 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 How was daycare? Good. Good. You know what? He peed in the potty on his own. You did. At daycare. <gasps> I told you mom would be proud of I'm you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. You're proud of us too? Potty training is going well. <laughs> Today we're making fat bombs. <laughs> um, these are really, really good. I probably consume more than I should every day. I shouldn't say that because what is should? I don't know. I actually talked to my keto coach today about this and she said that, no, go ahead and eat these. So I think that's free reign to just eat as many as I want. You got to get a lot of fat. You do got to get a lot and of fat. There's a lot of fat and there's low carbs. Good fat content, pretty good protein content and very, very minimal carbs. So if that's not keto. I don't know. So basically all that's in this recipe is cream cheese almond butter, butter, um, sweetener. It's erythritol slash monk fruit sweetener. So it's okay to have on keto, um, no carbs and then vanilla. And that's basically it. You just blend it all together and then freeze it. And then you have a delicious treat once it's frozen. <laughs> Now we're going to throw these into the freezer for maybe like an hour or two and then I'll cut them up and then put them back in the freezer where they will live until we consume them all in a day or two. I be here. <laughs> this is. Can you helping me? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's a little guy. See it. <laughs> that combined with what I ate during the cooking process counts for one. <laughs> <laughs> and voila, a double batch of keto cookie dough bombs, fat bombs, minus the ones Rob just scarfed down. We need the fat. We <laughs> need the fat. Need the fat, hey? We need fat. <laughs> hey. <laughs>